So good morning, good afternoon, uh, all of you. Um, yeah, this is uh, the session on uh, operational water management. Um, I'm happy to uh, chair this session together with uh, Ms. Chang. Um, we are here in Hanoi with um, a, a room full of uh, people. Um, and I see that we have 11 people from the audience. Um, I'm, yeah, 12 audience and six speakers. So, yeah, so that's 18. Um, and just uh, as a brief, a very brief intro introduction, I try to share my screen now um, to show you what is. Oh my God, why don't I see? Oh, this one. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can share. What is operational water management? I wanted to show it in one slide. No, no, no. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's still thinking. Yeah, no, this is not what I mean, of course. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I just wanted to show you one slide. Why? Yeah. Um, one slide. Why is it so difficult? Yeah, but then I go to. Well, this is really a technical issue, of course. Well, operational water management is, is easier than this. Um, Hello. Because um, oh, I'm, 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 I'm confused now. Some, there's too many things going oh, happening. Okay. Um, I stop sharing. What I will do now is give the floor to the first speaker because uh, this is too complicated for a person like me. So I would like to give the floor to um, Ms. Pia Marn. If I, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. And I try to unmute you. Uh, can you un unmute yourself? You're still muted. Yeah, you're still muted. Hi, maybe I can help you. Um, there is there a green dot next to your microphone icon on the left top corner? It worked before, so so you know. <laughs> so we should make it um, make it work. That should work. All right, Pia Mam, can you hear me? Ah, now you. Can. Yeah. Great. I'm back. Can you, yeah. Great. So hello everyone. Can you hear me well? I hope now it's okay. Yeah. Can you can you can hear, hear me? You? Okay, great. So good afternoon from Bangkok, and. Um, Okay, now the slide is on. Uh, my, my name is Pia Mansi Somporn from Hydro Informatics Institute, Bangkok, Thailand. And the topic that I would like to share with you today is the storm surge forecasting system in the Gulf of Thailand during public tropical storm in 2019. 
So forming in the South China Sea on the last day of 2018, the tropical storm bubble cat struck southern Thailand on the first week of 2019. It made a landfall in Pakanang, Nakhon Sintamarat on January 4th, killed four people and the economic losses were estimated to be around 156 billion US dollars. So hi or our institute as a national hydroinformatics institute we were we were suddenly engaged in this disaster as we found in our storm surge forecasting system the tendency of the storm surge to occur in the gulf of thailand so immediately the message was uh, delivered to the national water committee and finally the warning was announced to evacuate the people from Pak Panang. So there were about 31,000 people evacuated from the rich area. And, and that's the, the story of the storm surge forecasting system and public storm. In this slide, you can see the structure of the system that I just mentioned. So uh, on the left hand side, you can see the system, the structure. So we have the hydrodynamic models using the 3D FM to simulate the hydrodynamic effect. And we also have the wave model, regional and the local wave model. And uh, for, the new, for the weather forecast, we use the couple atmosphere and ocean modeling system, WASPROM, to provide the pressure and the wind force to the model. And everything uh, as the components, they are all connected using fields, early warning system using uh, the fields as a platform to integrate the real-time data and the models, and also automatically produce the forecast every day, one time per day. So actually the system has been developed since 2015 and in operation from 2016 until today. This storm is the first storm of the system since uh, in operation, but it is uh, 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 for, it is all, almost 22 years from the last storm, Linda, yeah, for, for the storm surge in, in Thailand. So finally, on January 4th, the public uh, storm has made a landfall in Pak Panang, Nakhon Si Tamarat, and the system could pick up the surge and also the, the, the uh, other effect from the storm. From the slide, you can see this is the output from the uh, forecasting system. The maximum water level was about 2.3 meter, and the peak surge is about 1.6 meter. Public storm not only bore the high surge or high water level in the sea, but it also brought heavy rainfalls, a widespread of flooding extreme waves and storm surge in the area and its effect could be also observed even in the upper gulf of thailand as you can see on the right hand side the inundation area on the, the nearby coastal area was also simulated uh, it was found that in the low-lying area including the estuary mangrove and local community lived by the coast are all affected by the coastal flooding due to high surge. From this picture, it is the comparison between the satellite image and the model result. Um, it can be seen that it, 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 it is quite uh, difficult to identify the source or the cause of flooding in the satellite image. So for this event, we use the local uh, we use the, uh, the re local reporting to confirm our simulation for the inundation area. And it helps a lot because the satellite image alone cannot, con cannot uh, tell about the cause of the flooding. It could be from other causes as well. 
in conclusion, uh, the overall performance of the storm surge forecasting system was highly satisf uh, satisfactory. Uh, even though it, it was the first time for the system and as well as for, for us as the modeler and operator of this system also. Uh, but from this experience, what we found is not only on the development of the modeling side, but also uh, we would like to elevate the uh, disturb preparation, uh, accurate information and reliable early warning system are the key and they are very important to save people's lives and their properties compared to, to the past event that uh, hundreds of people were killed from the disaster without uh, accurate information or warning for them. Uh, so this is all for my presentation. Thank you everyone. And, and uh, if you have any questions, there, please welcome to ask. much for your interesting presentation um, we have uh, one or two minutes for some questions um, i see here there is one question from uh, dr chin uh, asking can you tell a little more about your integration of the monitoring stations in the area uh, for the monitoring station we have uh we have uh, the monitoring, uh, the real-time data from the uh, hydrographic department. Yeah, but mostly they are along the coast. Yeah, and uh, during public storm, we have some information uh, from the oil rigs in the Gulf of Thailand. So that helped for the reanalysis. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have also a question. Um, mm -hmm. You um, you were very uh, uh, you showed that uh, there you had quite good results of your your modeling and mm -hmm. and predictions. Um, is there anything you would like to improve in this uh, in your system in your modeling and forecasting system? Uh, based on our experience, uh, because normally the model run every day but during normal period then we don't see that the the running time is crucial but during the emergency situation for example if when we have storm for the storm it's so sensitive to 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 many factors so it could be uh bigger or weakened you know within minutes but the model runs uh during normal normal period is only one time per day but during the storm we should uh, update it every like a three or six hour to monitor and follow the storms. Yeah, so that's uh, something that we learned that during the, the the crisis, there should be like a shortcut that we uh, the the model should uh, just uh, optimize the runtime, reduce some output just to save some time. We only uh, look at what we would like to know, you know or reduce some some. Uh, uh, pre and post process to reduce the the total time that we need to wait that 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 uh, from our experience so we have prepared for two two ways of running for during normal situation we run everything and there are some shortcut paths for the emergency situation okay thank you uh, there is one other question of uh, dr shupa divedi uh, I would like to keep that question for at the end of our uh, session. We have some general discussion, an interesting mm -hmm. question about um, the problems of uh, forecasting and still there mm -hmm. are um, mm -hmm. many mass destructions in coastal areas. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for your yeah, presentation. You're welcome. I would like then to go to the next presentation. Now, my question that will be, let me see, that's Mr. Nguyen Da. Let me see. Uh, yeah, here. 
Mr. Da, are you there? Oh, you're here. Yeah, <laughs> he's in the room. Okay, so um, you can start your presentation. Share screen. Hello. Okay. How to share? This one. Um. Okay. Hello, I'm Verena from Tech Assistance. Do you need help? Yes. All right, so what's the problem? I, I would like to share my screen, but I, I don't know how to do that. All right, um, can, you, can you move the laptop to another room? Because as you're both in one at the same room, it's not working with two laptops. Oh, I found it. Okay, but we have an echo. Can you please turn turn down the volume on the other laptop as well? Because okay. All right. Hello. I'm sorry. We ha we have an echo. Can can you, Mr. Marchen, please please turn down the the volume of your computer and just listen to the audio from Mr. Da. Okay, that sounds better to me now. Okay. okay. I can hear you and I can see the presentation. We're still having an, an echo. My echo? Yeah, I think that the computer which Mr. Marchant is using, uh, can you turn off the audio from this laptop? Not the mic, just the, the audio. Or move to another room. Only one laptop per room with audio, please. Okay. Hello? Yes. Okay. We still have, I can still hear myself. So can you just mute the computer? Just mute the other computer. Is it good now? Uh, I think it's better now, yes. Okay, yes, I good. think so. Thank you. Yep. So uh, good afternoon, everyone, and good morning uh, to people in uh, from Europe. Uh, I'm Dan Nguyen. Uh, I'm from Hari team from Hanoi. And today I'm going to present uh, our project uh, entitled The Atlas Towards a Vietnam uh, Resilient to Climate Change. And this work is done in collaboration with uh, Tang Leung, Kien Nguyen, Chang Ding, and Chung Nguyen, uh, also from Hari team. And uh, so what is the Atlas and why is it important? Let's uh, take a look. Uh, so as you know, that Vietnam is a long country and it's located in the tropical area. And so on average, each year we have about five to six tropical cyclones uh, impacting Vietnam. And it also have uh, two big low-lying deltas, uh, the Red River Delta in the north and the uh, Mekong Delta in the south. So these regions are, are very sensitive to sea, sea level rise. And with a large portion of pop population working in the agriculture sector, about 32%, so uh, with all of these factors, it makes Vietnam one of the uh, most vulnerable country to climate change. And uh, um, extreme events in Vietnam happen quite uh, frequent, uh, such as drought, flood, soil intrusion, tropical cyclones. And the problem is that for an average person, uh, we cannot tell uh, if these events are due to climate change or is uh, still within the natural climate uh, variability was due to human impacts. So uh, um, we can only answer this question with uh, a firm knowledge of the country's climate. However, uh, climate information in Vietnam is uh, limited. And uh, so the objective of this uh, project is to improve the accessibility of Vietnamese people on climate and climate change information by creating EATLAS and distribute it to everyone in Vietnam for free. And so we will target first for education for students and teachers. Then it could be also useful for researchers and it could be also uh, useful for decision makers uh, uh, and anyone who, who have interest in uh, Vietnam climate. 
And so the, the method to create the atlas uh, is very simple. We first collect data, as you know, data in Vietnam is very sparse. And so we could collect data, uh, especially from satellite data, because satellite data has very good uh, spatial and temporal coverage. And after we collect the data, we can create the atlas uh, of Vietnam lands and ocean climate. And um, <clears throat> here's the content of the current version of uh, our e-atlas. So we have about five variables over the mainland, including rainfall, wind, air, te air temperature, humidity, and vegetation index. And all of these data are in uh, over a long period, uh, about 40 years. And over the ocean, we have about nine different variables, sea surface temperature, salinity, height, current, wave, wind, color, and uh, storm track. And, um, and so um, after we uh, create the atlas or the climatology, monthly and daily climatology of the, the data, we can store this data on the free assess website with uh, supporting graphical tools. And user can, can choose uh, variables, region of interest, time, plot types, uh, map or time series, uh, to extract the information that they need and to further guide them uh, how to utilize the, the atlas uh, we provide a number of case studies um, for instance we we provide case studies that is about famous natural uh, phenomena such as the south vietnam upwelling or laos wind uh, to give you an example so upwelling is normally um, a very high productive area in the ocean and uh, when wind blow along coastline, uh, uh, it will push water from surface offshore and deeper water uh, will have to rise to the surface to replace. And deeper water is uh, normally uh, colder and richer in nutrients. And so when they reach surface, uh, it trigger uh, uh, phytoplankton blooms and it can be observed uh, from satellite uh, via set surface temperature and chlorophyll. And so we at last provide all of this uh, data uh, to monitor this process. So in Vietnam, uh, here's the wind field in Vietnam for May, June, July, and August. In May, you see that uh, the wind is pretty weak. And in, Ju in June, the wind start blowing stronger and it's blow along the South Vietnamese coast here. One of the priority uh, prior condition for the upwelling to happen. And in, in, in July, the wind blows stronger and strongest in August. And we can also look, see from the surface temperature, we see that in May we have nothing. In June, there is a tiny cold tongue near, near the South Vietnam. And in July, it developed stronger and strongest in August. In August, the total area can uh, affected by the upwelling can be uh, about one third of the, the East Vietnam City. And if we look at the chlorophyll map, uh, we see that the, the uh, variation is quite similar. We see nothing in May, and then in uh, June, there is a tiny uh, region here with high concentration. In July, it's developed stronger, and uh, in August, it's uh, strongest here. So this illustrates that Yadlas is capable uh, of, uh, how say, illustrating uh, a uh, natural phenomena, uh, which is useful for education and for, for research. And uh, we can also uh, provide uh, case studies that compare climate into any uh, two different locations. It could be any provinces along the country. It could be any coastal region along the country. It could be any combination of uh, the provinces uh, in the country. And uh, we can we also provide uh, case studies about uh, to compare weather and climate uh, to so that uh, user can understand better the difference between weather and climate. So, for instance, uh, today temperature in Hanoi is 42 degrees. Then, is it a signal of climate change? Uh, that is um, a, a quite a difficult question. Uh, without uh, and, and yet, last uh, is ca maybe is ca capable to answer this question. And um, <clears throat> your last can also answer question like real life question. For instance, along Vietnamese coast, when when the tropical cyclone impact the most? And this is this question is useful. Uh, for instance, for uh, investment, for uh, 
uh, economic activities. Or uh, if you, because we, Vietnam has a long coastline and with beautiful beaches, so uh, we can have uh, questions, something like, uh, if you organize a surfing competition, then when, when would you help? And so here, uh, I will show you an example to, to the first question. The Atlas provides a storm risk map. We, uh, com uh, <clears throat> we combine uh, tro tropical cyclone frequency and intensity into uh, risk and scale them in the uh, scale from zero to 10, with 10 being the highest risk and zero means there's no risk. And so you can see that the storm season in Vietnam start from about uh, June to December. And with the strongest risk uh, in the Western, uh, Western Pacific here uh, at the scale of 10, and along the Vietnamese coast, uh, the, the strongest, uh, the riskiest time is uh, in October for the Northern Vietnam and uh, November for the Central Vietnam. So we have, uh, you have seen that uh, at last can be useful for uh, education, for um, research and for uh, economic activities. Uh, this is uh, in, <clears throat> in our current phase, uh, we, are uh, we, have, we focus on Vietnam climate and hopefully the website at last uh, will be ready in May uh, 2021. In phase two, we will focus on climate change and we may also develop uh, apps for a smartphone. And in phase three, we will we may add more information such as uh, environment, health, biosphere, such as map of endangered species, uh, demographics, economics, and culture, and many more. And uh, so, uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have questions, you can uh, as now or email us at hari at iscale.vn. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for this interesting uh, presentation. Um, I think it's a very good uh, example of how we can make data available for uh, for the wider public and for everybody. As you as you all know, as we all know that we are sometimes struggling with uh, with getting the right data. Uh, so um, uh, uh, a one-stop uh, shop for uh, climate data, I think, is a very good, uh, very good uh, initiative. Um, okay, um, maybe there were like, some questions in the in the chat. Meanwhile, um, we are going further. I must say that, in, unfortunately, we had another. Um, oral presentation from Mr. Luong, um, but that uh, has been um, um, canceled by him. So we are now going to Ms. Varda Panondi, if I pronounce it well. So I can try to give you the floor. Hello. Yeah. Can oh, you yeah. hear me? Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so, please, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, a pleasant day to everyone. I am Warda Panondi, a graduate student from Hokkaido University under the River and Watershed Laboratory Field of Engineering for the Environment Division. And I'm working with Professor Izumi Norihiro. This study estimates the amount of uh, annual runoff and sediment yield in a 6,500 square kilometer watershed of southern Philippines. We also quantify the effect of climate change in the year 2030 to 2089 using three global circulation models with two representative concentration pathways or RCP 4.5 and 6.0. We use the SWAT or soil water assessment tool as our primary tool in the study. We utilize SWAT CAP SUFI tool algorithm for model calibration and uncertainty analysis. Uh, the, this study's uh, primary purpose is to contribute to the dam operation, soil and water resources management, and reserve sustainability in uh, changing climate. 
if you are uh, interested with this uh, research, uh, it is my pleasure to talk about more of this in my poster presentation at um, poster 43. Thank you so much. Uh, is brief introduction into your uh, work and indeed uh, your um, uh, the poster can be also uh, um, there is a special session on that right y yes yeah um, so it, it, so only one minute po poster press uh, pitch poster pitch Okay. Well, actually, uh, because one one presentation has uh, has been uh, cancelled, uh, we have some more time. So, uh, if you uh, if you will, uh, if you are willing to 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 tell a bit more about your work, you can do it now. Uh, yeah, sure. Can, yeah. Is that? Uh, yeah, uh, it is my pleasure to discuss it. Yeah, Thank we so we, we still have five five minutes for that. Okay, five minutes. Okay, uh, pleasant day uh, again. Uh, so climate change uh, affects the hydrological cycle that will utter the transformation and transport of the runoff and uh, sediment uh, transport. So uh, this uh, watershed experienced a uh, very high sedimentation due to the land conversion and plantation and also due to the effect of climate change. Most of this area is uh, uh, experiencing the uh, high sedimentation, uh, high sedimentation above the tolerable amount, which is 10 per ton, 10 tons per hectares per year. So the main objective of uh, this study is to estimate the amount amount of runoff and also the sediment yield in the Polangi watershed basin, and also uh, we quantify the impacts of uh, climate change. So the study area is located in uh, Mindanao, which is the uh, second largest uh, island in the Philippines, in the southern part, which it has an area of 6,455, and uh, the climate is relatively cool and humid throughout the year, and there is a uh, uh, average annual rainfall of 2,800, and one reservoir here, as you can see here, the red reservoir at the middle. We use the soil water assessment tool, which is basically a uh, model, hydrologic modeling based on the water balance equation. The main input for this model is the meteorological data, the precipitation, temperature, wind, speed, solar radiation, and uh, relative humidity. On the GIS data, we input digital ele elevation model, land use, land cover, and soil data. As uh, After that, uh, we gain the result. We uh, conduct a sensitivity analysis and calibration and validation. And then after that, we assess the model on its effect by inputting the three GCM, which is the GFDL, HANGEF2, and MIRO. We have two uh, uh, span of uh, uh, years, which is 2030 to 2059, is, uh, we call it 2040s and 2070s, which is 2070s is 2060 to 2089. We also use the change factor model as our downscaling technique. And as a result, as you can see here, uh, we, have a very, uh, we have a good uh, result of uh, calibration in stream flow. However, in the sedimentation, we have a uh, unsatisfactory due to the limited observed data sets in the field. And this is uh, the sig SWAT significant in, in the table three, we can see the SWAT significant parameters for the model and their sensitivity. C, uh, C2, SOL, AWC, HRU, slope is the, more, is the most sensitive in this study. And here we can also see the uh, climate change impact on temperature and precipitation. The blue line is the observed, and this is the uh, increase of precipitation in other, co other colors in figure five and the two boxes is 
the uh, maximum temperature and uh, minimum temperature, we see there is a significant changes or increase in the precipitation and temperature. And also in the impact of uh, climate change and runoff and sediment yield, as you can see here, this is the baseline uh, and this is the uh, estimated runoff for year 2030, uh, 2030 to 2059 and 2060 to 2089, there is an increase of 11 times uh, in the runoff in the future. And in the sediment, there is this is the uh, baseline of 1970 to 2000. So there is a average increase of 10 times sediment yield in the future of 2030 to 2059 and 2060 to 2089. So with this, I conclude that the calibration and validation and uncertainty analysis for stream flow were generally satisfactory, while sediment yield was less satisfactory due to the limited data sets. And the baseline year showed that all 25 sub-basin in the Polangi watershed are experiencing critical yield beyond the tolerable amount of tons per hectare, 10 tons per hectare per year. And the impact of climate change resulted in drastic increase of precipitation from May to October while rapidly decreasing in November to April. The three model performance shows that RCP 4.5 will increase the average annual temperature by amount of 1.53 degrees Celsius, while RCP 6.0 will have a 1.6 degrees Celsius increase. So all models predicted a severe increase in surface runoff, as I mentioned a while ago, uh, resulting in 11 times uh, that will cause a frequent flooding in low-lying region and landslide in hilly areas and also the impact of climate change in sediment yield was about uh, 10 times of that baseline and runoff and sediment yield is more pronounced during the wet months which is May to October and decrease in dry months which is November to April. So this study may contribute to the dump operation soil and water resources management practices, and so reserve of sustainability of Polangi watershed in climate change. So with this, thank you so much for your listening. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Uh, very well, very clear. Also very challenging, a very, very um, uh, significant uh, potential impacts of the climate on the on the on the the water uh, management in that watershed right yes, um, yes as you say if you if you were talking about uh, 10 times more uh sediment yield or 10 11 times more uh, rainfall yeah. runoff uh mm -hmm. that 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 mean that that uh, and and you you at the last uh, conclusion you also uh, mentioned that uh, that you um, that that must have consequences on the uh, reservoir operation. Is there is there something which you can uh, already can do about it? Is the, did you make recommendations or did you study how the the, the result of this uh, research uh, would um, would need to have a change in the the daily or the, the annual operation of the reservoir? Uh. Yes, uh, currently, uh, based on the uh, based on the uh, report that uh, most of the dams here in these places was uh, not modeled like not modeled uh, carefully. So, uh, uh, by means of, uh, for example, is controlling the sediment uh, yield from the watershed into reservoir by erosion control and sediment trap. Uh, by considering this amount is very helpful in, ex in the sustainability of the reservoir. I I'm sorry if I answered it correctly. Forward to, to hear more about it later when, when Hello. The, the results are being picked up by, by the, the managers of, uh, of, of this, uh, this water system. Huh? This, uh, that is, of course, um, as we also yesterday uh, heard about, we we know there is a lot of knowledge about the water systems. Uh, we can model more and more, but the question is how can we get the information to the decision makers? Uh, that is the, the next question. Hey, but, uh, yes. 
but but uh, now uh, we are currently uh, coordinating with the uh, government institution like the national power uh, uh, corporation managing this uh, reservoir okay that's very good to hear okay thank you very much um thank you so much then we have let me see um yeah, because we, we still had some, some time because one presentation was cancelled. Uh, we have another small presentation. Uh, Ms. Chang, can you uh, take the floor and um, give an example of uh, modern data management? Right. All right, hello. We only saw a black screen and you are still muted. So let's try again. Hello, I'm Verena from Technical Support. Can I help you? Ah, now the audio. Right. I cannot share my screen. I don't know why. Um, it worked before. Did you just couldn't see the the presentations the presentations mode? Okay. So maybe just try to do whatever you did before again, and I'll give you feedback. Right? Yeah, there it is. Now it, this is the working mode, and yeah. okay. So. Yeah, all right. I can see I can see it. What I can see what you're doing. You're trying to test the view, right? Yeah, I want to do it uh, to how to say in, in full screen. Yeah. Yeah, the full screen. I it's not from the, the chef is not familiar to me, but now there it is. Yeah. Great. Yeah, uh, good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so at, uh, we're talking a lot about the operational water management system. And I think one of the most important of the operational management is always the first question is about where the data. And I think that is not just in Vietnam, but it also in the world is there are some place that we're facing of the shortage of the data. And especially if you really want to have the live system, the operational system, and uh, and then you uh, facing the problem, of, uh, you really need the real time data, and you really need the, or at least the near real time data. Uh, so to uh, to uh, to just cope with the data shortage in also in the world. So last year, uh, Delta Res, we were developed a web uh, platform uh, when we would like to. Uh, share also the global uh, data sets uh, to the public people. Uh, and then I would like also today to give a very short introduction about uh, our web platform with the name Blue Earth Data. So it's the Blue Earth Data, it's uh, basically a, a combination of the global data sets that is uh, providing the, for example, the real-time water level and storm surge forecast uh, for 10 days. Uh, and it's the uh, real-time uh, medium-term uh, forecast uh, that we run in our system in, in Dell. Uh, uh, 
using our DL2D uh, model, uh, but in that we call the global uh, tie and storm search model, uh, also in the integrated platform uh, DL field system. And uh, it uh, provides the water level and the storm search uh, forecast for the 10 day. And uh, together with this, we also have the uh, real time hydrological forecast also at the global scale uh, to provide the medium term and uh, seasonal fluvial uh, flow forecast. Um, and it it uh, run also on our uh, um, is a result from our uh, global W flow data uh, and also the D flow one D model uh, in the forecasting engine Dell uh, field uh, and. Uh, we provide also in the blue earth data the soil line monitoring. Uh, actually, this is the uh, uh, DRI as, as the satellite DRI result and images for the period from 1984 to 2017 that you will have at least uh, you will see how is a soil line chain for every. Um, um, 500 meters along the shore. And uh, we provide is it also uh, using uh, the, the lenses, uh, the Landsat uh, imaging. And uh, with uh, our expert in the hour, we do some data processing and and uh, we uh, we also uh, have the data set in the good Google engine that we uh, visualize into the Blue Earth uh, website uh, platform. And the last but not least, it uh, we also provide the mid ocean database, the historical wind and wave climates uh, for also pre uh, for the period uh, of uh, uh, around uh, uh, 20 year uh, with the point and the map data for the global uh, data for every uh, 25 kilometers. And this is actually the data that uh, the statistic data based on the uh, uh, Era five or era interim data from ECMWF, uh, but for all of this, we uh, combine it into uh, one uh, website platform that we uh, mapping it and we share all the global data set uh, to support the study and also uh, to sharing uh, for uh, the user the integrated the global water and also the subsoil related data. Uh, the Blue Earth Data Platform is a free and um, web-based platform and it's a free of charge. So uh, you can just uh, go to the SEC website and you can very easy to register for your account. And with the register account, you can download our selected data uh, to uh, your device. Um, and in this, we provide the global data set from the river discharge forecast, storm surge forecast, the shoreline chain, also battery in the global scale, and the metal ocean condition. Uh, and uh, the blue earth, uh, if you really want to integrate the, uh, the uh, data set from the blue earth, or you can want to take it from the blue earth website into your operational a water management system in your server. You can also easy do it with our API. Uh, and uh, the Blue Earth is very flexible and you also very easy to integrate it into the uh, third party uh, data service. And uh, uh, to, uh, I would like also to show you the And uh, at the at the end of uh, the uh, presentation, you will see the uh, uh, website, um, the link to our website. If you really want to, uh, um, and you also can see uh, a introduction in the YouTube, a video in the YouTube that you can also uh, take a look at this. And if we, yeah, and if you have uh, any question, in the Please email us. Thank you uh, very much for your attention. Uh, yeah, maybe you can try to, to run the YouTube movie. Maybe? Yeah, uh, I can run the YouTube movie. Okay, and but first I, I have to share my screen.
Okay, uh, thank you very much for this uh, short presentation. I want to briefly return to some questions we had from the audience. Uh, there's one question. Uh, which is about the, oh, can you close the, um, there's a question to, uh, to the first uh, presenter. And uh, Chan, can you put out the, uh, I hear double. Um, for, question from Dr. Shuba Divedi about, yeah, we have all these nice uh, forecasting methods, um, but still there is a lot of the destruction and damages and and disasters ongoing. Um, yeah, of course this is a big question, um, but I was wondering if um, if if you would had uh, maybe some uh, some reaction on that. What uh, what could be uh, uh, in the near future be done to reduce? These, uh, these 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 disasters in the coastal areas. Uh, yeah, actually, I am I am quite agree with with <laughs> the comment from 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 uh, this participant. But since we cannot avoid the disaster, we can only mitigate the the effect of the or the impact of the disaster. From the forecasting side, what we can do is that we, we, we try to improve and make it accurate and reliable. Uh, but on another side is the, the awareness of the people is also quite important. Many cases in this world, uh, even though we, we warn them, we, we announce for evacuation, they don't go. That's uh, that's something that uh, we, we have to raise this issue also. Mm -hmm. So it, it has to be from both sides, from the uh, forecasting uh, point of view. Yeah, that's mainly the technology. And I think now everything is growing quite rapidly. And, and uh, you know, as you, you saw from the blue earth, many data now become available. Mm -hmm. uh, but on another side, the awareness of the people yeah, that's also something that we have to teach them from from uh, I think from a very young age, as we saw in Japan, for example, they have to uh, practice for uh, for example, if there is an earthquake, they know what to do. Yeah. 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 People. Tend, and, yeah, and, and I think nature people tend to forget the disaster very fast you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's correct yeah and uh one one thing which i was thinking is that uh, nowadays you see uh, the 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 forecasting early warning is evolving towards uh impact based uh, forecasting so that we not only uh try to predict uh how much flooding there will be or how mm -hmm. much a storm surge there will be but also what will be the possible impacts on like the number of people who get uh, mm -hmm. affected or the, mm -hmm. uh, the the potential damage which would could occur is that something mm -hmm. uh, also with what your organization is, uh, is is doing as the next step uh this is uh something that actually quite important also because uh in the past we, although we have very good model, but still the, the fall alarm is high. Yeah. So people tend not to believe the forecast, you know. Uh, so we should improve the, the model in a way that we can scope down the area to the, uh, to the very high potential risk area. And then the village, the uh, important uh, areas like uh, uh, the cities or school hospital, they, they have to be worn. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So there is and, still, and, um, mm -hmm. you say that there is still uh, also uh, 
um, effort needed to to improve yeah. the models in terms of accuracy yeah. right yes also yeah. and uh, in our case we do the inundation model also in parallel with the with the sea level forecast so we are not only see the sea level but we also see the risk area or the potential risk impact area that could be damaged from this high sea level and then we yeah. we, we yeah uh, pointed to this area scope down yeah narrow down the the warning area yeah thank you um still two minutes to go um i see another question to uh, miss chang from Guyet Chang, uh, how did you treat the low quality data or data and availability while uh, the mapping? So do you have any uh, answer to that? Chang, maybe you can come here to, <laughs> otherwise we get this problem with the, with the, uh, with the, with the noise. You know the question? Please, please. Yeah. Also about data quality and data mapping. This one I understand, yeah. but why mapping? What? So I will try to answer your question, but uh, uh, I'm not. Maybe I'm not fully uh, understand this. So if uh, uh, if you you need clarification, so we can maybe talk beside the conference. Uh, but I understand you talking about that. Uh, are you talking about the modeling? OK, so now I understand it. So actually, the data that uh, we saw in the website, it already, uh, um, how to say, already possessed. So actually, it's the website is just uh, um, the tool that helped you to visualize uh, the data, the result coming from the model. But the model itself is running our Dell field system in Dell. And it's the model, it also, um, uh, we develop the model and we also calibrate it and we also validate it. And the model result is can uh, uh, provide you the, uh, the result for hundreds of points uh, into the world, according to the world. Um, and uh, actually the modeling is, is itself, uh, it's um, it all done in our system in, in Dell. So what we saw is that the result, it already bought processing to make sure that you have a good uh, quality before we public into the website. Uh, so uh, so the, the website is the tool that we want to share the, the data set to the user that maybe you need it, but you don't know where you can find it. And uh, maybe in the way that you don't have it at all. So we can refer to our website and you can check that whether there, are, there is something useful for you. Uh, actually, that we cannot make sure that we have uh, all of the POI. Uh, and maybe in your internet area, we don't have it. Uh, but uh, the model result is currently providing hundreds of POI, hundreds of POI result. So I hope that uh, I answer your question. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and um, that is the, um, the time is, is finished. I, um, it uh, ends our session. Um, I would like to thank all the uh, the presenters uh, of this um, of today, uh, and 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 of course also the audience who uh, was uh, so uh, kind to 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 be patient uh, when something when was uh, going on a bit late or not in in time because of the technical issues, but. Uh, I think for me and for many other people, it's maybe the first time to do a, uh, a kind of a conference uh, in this way. Um, but uh, I think I, I really, uh, I hope that uh, that you also or that you all uh, enjoyed uh, the uh, the information and the presentations we had uh, this afternoon. Uh, there are some other questions in the chat. Uh, we will take them um, take them up and. Um, 
Um, I look forward to uh, to meeting you uh, in another situation later. Uh, who knows when or where? Thank you very much.